Okay, so today we try to understand some applications of the second law of thermodynamics. And these applications are heat engine, refrigerator, and heat pump. Now, suppose we'll consider the first application that is the heat engine. Now, as shown over here, in case of the heat engine, we are having the source which is at a higher temperature T1, then sink which is at a lower temperature T2. Heat is supplied from the source and from this total heat that is supplied, some part of the heat is converted into work and remaining part is rejected. So 100% conversion of heat into work is not possible and therefore heat is known as the low grade energy. Now we will consider this engine as a thermodynamic system. So we we'll consider this engine as a thermodynamic system. Now we can see that we will apply the energy balance equation over here. So heat is supplied then out of that some part of the work is produced and some heat is rejected to the surrounding or to the sink. So applying the energy balance equation over here, you can say that the incoming arrow is nothing but this Q1 must be equal to what W plus Q2 or you can say that W will be equal to Q1 minus Q2. So it is Q1 minus Q2. Now efficiency of the heat engine it is given by output divided by input. Now in this particular case output is nothing but the work produced and input is nothing but the heat supplied. So W divided by Q1 multiplied by 100 will be the efficiency of the G1 heat engine. Now we know that the cycle that we have shown over here on which the heat engine is working is rotating or it is going in the clockwise direction. It means that whenever we are having any device which is producing the work then the cycle on which that particular device is working will always go in the clockwise direction. In other words the suction, compression, expansion and exhaust they will always go in the clockwise direction. Now you will see the another application of the uh, second law of thermodynamics that is a refrigerator. In this particular case we want to transfer the heat from the body at lower temperature to the body at higher temperature and as we have to transfer the heat from low temperature to the high temperature the work is required to be supplied. So work is supplied over here. The heat that we are abstracting from the sink that is known as the heat abstraction or it is also known as the refrigerating effect that is produced. And this is important part because here we want to lower this temperature of the sink further below the atmosphere. So this is our output in this case and input is nothing but the work required. Again we will consider this as a thermodynamic system. And then now as you can see over here, here we have shown this cycle it is going in this cycle is going in the anti-clockwise direction because this is power absorbing device. Now applying the energy balance equation, we can see over here this is W that is coming to the system. Q2 is also coming to the system and whereas heat is rejected from the system. So you can say that W plus Q2 will be equal to Q1 or rather Q1 is equal to W plus Q2. And therefore in this case work is equal to heat rejected minus refrigerating effect that is produced. Now the performance of this refrigerator is measured by the term which is known as the coefficient of performance COP and that is equal to output divided by input. So as we have seen earlier, output is nothing but what? It is the refrigerating effect that is produced. How much amount of the heat that we are abstracting from the sink is our output because we want to decrease this temperature of the sink further below the atmosphere. Temperature. So output is Q2 and input is W. So coefficient of performance is given by Q2 divided by W. We will go to the another application that is known as the heat pump. Here also we are having this heat pump as the thermodynamic system and again here also our cycle is 
moving in the anti clockwise direction so because it is a power absorbing device now what is the basic difference between this uh, what we can say refrigerator and heat pump is that in this particular in case of the refrigerator what we are having we want to decrease the temperature of the sink below the atmospheric temperature whereas in case of the heat pump the purpose is to increase the temperature of the source further so this is our output in this particular case how much amount of the heat is rejected to the source and how by how much amount the temperature of the source is further increased so in this case our output is nothing but the heat rejected and input is nothing but what it is the work required to pump the heat from low temperature to the high temperature so again applying the energy panel similarly we can say that this arrow w this is coming to the system this is also coming to the system so w plus q2 must be equal to what it is q1 so w is equal to q1 minus q2 and coefficient of performance or energy performance ratio that will be output divided by input that is q1 divided by w now we have already seen that the coefficient of performance for the refrigerator is given by q2 divided by w if we add one on both the sides then we will get 1 plus cop of refrigerator is equal to 1 plus q2 upon w so w plus q2 upon w now as we can see over here w plus q2 is nothing but what it is q1 so it is q1 upon w but what is this q1 upon w this q1 upon w is nothing but what it is the cop of the heat pump in other words we can say that 1 plus coefficient of refrigerator is always equal to coefficient of heat pump so this is the relation between the cop of heat pump and cop of refrigerator